John in Menlo Park, California, heart of Silicon Valley. This is FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. I am the hardest working man in the optical industry. My name is C. More Better, but call me Mo. Mo Better, because I'm mean, seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better, and show everyone else how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. And today I get to do something really special. Here is a frame I have never cut lenses for before. People know that brand. That is the Amazon Smile. These are the Amazon Echo Frames. This hooks up to your Alexa. You now talk into it. It does all that stuff. Um, honestly, I don't know enough about it. John mailed me these. I've gone ahead. He's taken one for the team. I've programmed this into my database so that now on anyone else who wants lenses for this frame i can mail out the lenses for you you will not have to mail the frames to me um, and you'll see how to install the lenses just give me your prescription your pupillary distance and i can mail the lenses to you and you'll see how to mount them but it has all the power buttons and all that stuff i better not hit any of these buttons because i clearly don't know what i'm doing when it comes to the electronics of this i've read the instruction manuals do not use you know don't get wet I'm going to clean these very delicately when I'm at the end because these are... Oh, it's talking. Okay, let me turn that off. Um, I hit a button. Ooh, it's lighting up. It's lighting up. I should not have done that. Um, but hopefully it'll go off. But anyway, let me go ahead and begin. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses that come with the frame. And I'm going to put it into the tracing element of my blocker. I'm going to go ahead and assign this barcode to it. 3286. And I'm going to hit the start button. A little stylus is going to pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left side here at freeprescriptionlenses.com. Again, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy any genuine frame that I offer and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Now, because I don't sell these, I do charge $49.99 for the lenses. It did upgrade to the DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare, which adds another $69.99, so it'll be a total of roughly $120 tax-free for lenses in this frame, and I'll pay the return shipping back there. Now, let me see if I can cut these off. Still no clue what I'm doing. I'll read the instruction manual before doing that. Maybe if I just hold it down. See, that's what I get for hitting buttons. I don't know what it does. All right, at least it stopped blinking. There we go. There we go. So I need to enter the pupillary distance, which is 35 for the right eye. I'm going to send that on to the next screen. The computer starts at 32.5. The pupillary distance is the width between the center of your pupils. And... I'm going to tap the plus button until we get to 35. I do want to raise the optical center height up to, let's make that 21. I'm going to go two and a half above the center and cut it at 21 high. Now I just need to get your lenses prepped. Your right eye reads minus one and a quarter, minus 50 at 70, minus one and a quarter, minus 50 at 70. Put the power drum on zero. Make sure everything is centered where it's supposed to be. Put the power drum now on minus one and a quarter. Take the lens out of the protective packet. Place it in. Make sure this turn. Rotate the lens until the spherical component comes into view first. And it does check the astigmatism correction, which I'll explain later. I'm going to put three dots on the lenses. Let me darken those so you can see. Uno, dos, ocho. I think I'm math wrong. And I'm going to put an aura on that one. Let's do the same thing for the left. But one thing I like to do, I like to highlight your prescription so you know you're getting the manufacturer's original packaging from Zeiss, sunglass level, UV, UV protection, ultraviolet protection, and a clear lens. This is a single vision aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is round in every direction, give you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. This is a flatter front curvature to give you a wider field of view in today's flatter curvature frames. Your prescription is minus one and a quarter, minus 50. And the DuraVision Chrome anti-glare up there. 
and I also like to put on here that this is the right lens and the reason why I write all this is so you know when you open up your package you're receiving all the manufacturer's original packaging now the left eye minus 150 minus a quarter at 109 turn the axis wheel to 109 put the power drum on minus 150 take the lens out of the packet rotate until the spherical component comes into view first the 150 power Check the small amount of astigmatism correction you have. And I'll explain what all that means later. Uno, dos, once. And I'm going to put an L on there, which is Latin for not right, which I can identify with since I ain't right. Put the cap on that, highlight the power of the left lens, the minus 150, minus a quarter, Duravision Chrome, and this is the, what did I do with my red pen? Did I already lose it? What? No, oh, that is the red. I thought this was my blue pen. And this is the left lens. Now, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> oh, it's a bad joke, but somebody's got to tell it. You're moaning, but you'll be telling that joke tomorrow with your co-workers and everyone else. So... But again, the astigmatism correction, which I said I'll explain later, I will, but there's a way you can tell whether you'll need glasses in life or if you'll ever have astigmatism. And the sure test of that is, are you sleepy right before you fall asleep and when you wake up? Better yet, are you hungry right before you eat? If the answer to those questions is yes, then you're going to need glasses at some point in your life. So, the reason why I put those dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented and they're just perfectly. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset. So I'm going to get everything laid out there perfectly. Oh, I need a block. Or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while they are cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them here. Stick that one onto the first one. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line, the silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to something else magnetical in the magnetic hole. You like that? In the arm. Get everything laid out just so. Get it laid out just right. Kids, you see what I'm doing there? You see what I'm doing, kids? Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Pupillary distance for the left eye is 34, so I'm going to tap the minus button. It's going to, the left side is mirrored the right. I know that's the right side and I'm pointing to the left, but this is the left lens, which has mirrored the data. You like that since you're in uh, Silicon Valley, has mirrored that side. But we're going to tap the minus button twice. It goes down in half millimeter increments to 34. Keep the optical center the same. Get everything lined up just right. You know, it's funny, I have a tell. I always get quiet when I'm doing this, so I have to concentrate. It's the only time I'll shut up for once. And hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place the block onto the left lens. Come back here. Now, this is the tracer. This is the blocker. This is what's known as the edger. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your paddle board, and then you can paddle around any water body of water you want cutting your own lenses you will need this guy with the two thumbs to do it for you by the way this guy has the smashed thumb i hit it closed in the door don't look at it you're making me self-conscious people quit looking at my thumb look at the in that thumb better okay. one two three four i declare a thumb war <laughs> by the way i am a professional <laughs> give me your money and i will cut your lenses the um you know, when you are a professional, you can act a fool if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you have to act as professional as possible to fool people. So, the actual cutting wheel is this diamond-crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material till it's the final size. This wheel in the center is going to put a V-shaped bevel into the lens to stay inside the bevel of the frame. I'm going to wake up the computer. Job ID number 3286. 3286 or as I like to say installment 3286 of my 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. Spoiler alert, you're going to want to watch episode number 330 for something crazy that's going to happen. Really, I'm probably going to need to sit down and have a nap. That's what's going to happen. Um, 
You know, if you're tired, there's a, a nap for that. <laughs> Hello, is this on? All right, so these are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, Hindex plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material. But these are polycarbonate, my lens material of choice, so we're going to stay there. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, but I am going to place one on the rear concave surface of the lens, which I'll explain later. Essentially just smoothing out the back surface a little more than the front. Now the magnet's going to do a job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Did I mention free bad jokes with, uh, with every pair of glasses made? Hit the green start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts. By the way, secret agent, uh, what were you, 24? I can't remember, but that door does need cleaning. And you're the high-tech computer guy. You need some Alexa glasses. You know who you are, secret agent, whatever your number is. All right, so it's tracing the shape of the lens, making sure it's large enough to fit into the frame, measuring, going around a second time to measure the thickness to know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you will probably have none. Minimal, if any. Okay, a whole lot. No, no, just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's it. You didn't pay for the extra thick lenses, so you're not getting them. You're going to get the thinner, lighter weight lenses. The water you see flickering in the background, that's water to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens, unlike plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex that have water continuously spraying onto the lens. Now, Water will spray onto your lenses, but only to wash away the optical debris you see beginning to form, and it will do that in the last 20 seconds. Now, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel, from flying debris. It has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where well, your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that have to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Menlo Park, California, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now what the machine was just doing is zone check and balance system, seeing where to place the bevel after it is cut. Now the nice thing about the Zeiss lenses, I mentioned sunglass level protection, UV protection, ultraviolet protection, and a clear lens. Zeiss offers more UV protection than any other lens. That's why they partner with the American Cancer Society. They go all the way up to 400 nanometers of protection. Quit looking at my thumb. You're making me self-conscious. They offer 400 nanometers of protection where all the other labs stop around 320 or 340. Zeiss's go all the way to 11. No, 400, 400. And now for something completely different. So water is spraying onto the lens, so it tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Out comes a little wheel that has a spinning disc, a very fine disc that's gonna act like a fine grit sandpaper to smooth out the back surface of the lens. This is what's known as the safety bevel. There is something called the safety dance, and you're just gonna have to Google that. Or Bing, or Alta Vista or there are others. You know, Bing is a, in Yahoo or search engines, I know this because I Googled it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take the lens out of here. Oh, I cracked myself up. I don't need any of y'all. I can play with myself. <laughs> Think about your words. Think about your words. So when I was, I was just scraping all the optical sawdust off the lens. I was so poor growing up that there weren't any generals in my toy soldier collection, so when my parents sent me to my room, I would have to play with my privates. Hello? Is this on? It better not be. I turned it off. It, John could be recording every word that I say. Now, the reason I put the safety bevel on the back of the lens, the front is not rough. The back is baby smooth. But I'm going to tuck this in at the outside corner, and anyone else who buys lenses from me for their Amazon Alexa, excuse me, their Echo Frames, let me put the original lens back in to take out the original demo lenses, pull up on the top of the frame and using this thumb, do the opposite if you're left-handed, and this thumb too, you're gonna to press outward at the top while pulling upward here. 
and that's going to push the lens right out. Now to put the one in, I turn the frame over where the temple tips. The frame front is pointing upward. Feet at shoulder width, elbows touching my sides at a right angle. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Push down the nose and it doesn't want to go in so I'm going to take a little bit off and I'm going to notate that for people in the future. People with very strong prescriptions, I would appreciate it if you do mail me the frame because I can hit the bullseye, but I want to hit the center of the bullseye for you. Plus, this is not the thickest frame. If the lens were too large, it would cause the frame to stretch, or what we in the industry call roll, if you can imagine the bottom of your frame being like a gutter. If the lens were too large, it applies force in every direction. This is the thickest part of your frame. This is the thinnest, so the bottom is going to roll outwards, giving you an ugly, ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. It's a corny saying, but the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra at the beginning. I can always cut more off of a lens. I can never add it back on, so I start a little bit large and work my way down. Same bevel wheel comes out. Now one thing I could do, which you wouldn't be able to do at home, is to heat up the frame using a $200 hair dryer. That causes the plastic to become a little bit more pliable. But I do what's known as the cold mount. If you don't believe me, you can ask my wife. No, but I use no heat to install the lenses. I just want to, while the plastic is cold, I mount the lens in there. Again, tuck it in at the outside corners. Push down the nose first and then wiggle it around. It's still a little bit large, so I'm going to take it down another tenth. Now the right lens takes the longest. Once I get the right lens done, I flip it over and start cutting the left once I'm sure of the size of the right eye. Again, I don't want anyone to have to get lenses at home, pop them in that are too large. So I may just go ahead and buy one to keep here and to always use as a sizer to cut other people's lenses. Even though this is now programmed into the database, not just for Secret Agent 3286, but I have it saved in the database under Amazon Echo. And this model number is the GR798R. It's a 54i size. It comes in black. As far as I know, I don't know of any other colors or any other sizes that the GR798R comes in. I see the charging cord. I just don't know anything else about the frame. It only has controls on the right, so if you're left-handed, I don't know what you do. It does have spring hinges, and it's surprisingly lightweight. I know this looks bulky, but there's a lot of electronics in there that is spying on me and listening to every word. Alexis, convince John to buy more lenses from me. Alexis, convince John to buy more sunglasses from me. Alexis, convince John not to go anywhere else for his lenses in the future. <laughs> hey, what good is artificial intelligence if it doesn't benefit me? All right, got some cloth water on that. So again, we're going to tuck it in at the outside corners, push down at the nose, Oop, nope, I still don't want to force it in. I'm going to take another tenth of a millimeter off. And the reason why I have an R and an L on here is that I write down how much in tenths of a millimeter. Right now we're at three tenths of a millimeter reduced in size so it'll fit. And I'm going to do the same thing for the left size. And the reason why I gave John his own barcode is that years from now, should he ever need new lenses or sunglass lenses for this, I'll know exactly what size to cut them to before I ship. But because I do have to take it down three tenths, which is more than I thought it would be. Of course, this is my first time cutting lenses for this frame, so who knows what I thought it was. But I think I should go ahead and buy one of these. If anyone knows of a broken one, whenever they're watching this video, please message me a link. I do not need the temples. I just need this frame front. To hang on the wall, this is the Ray-Ban 2132 new Wayfair in the size 55 that I use to cut people's lenses. And I will hang this up here on that hook in the future, just the frame front. I don't need the temples. Someone needed temples, so I said, here, you can have them off of this frame. 
Well, that a nice thing of me to do. Speaking of nice, I had someone who needed a repair. They're in a fairly large city, but they called around in early November. They said that the earliest appointment they could get was December 28th, just to repair a hinge on a frame. I said, mail it to me. I'll fix it for free and pay the return shipping back. How's that? So, again, tucking it in at the outside corners, using my thumbs pressed down at the nose. All right, we're going to do about another tenth more. Let me try something else. I'm going to tuck it in at the nose first and press it. Out where there yet? No, it's still live. It wants to wiggle. All right, a tenth millimeter more, one tenth at a time. Again, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. The little extra at the beginning to make sure that it's perfect. Now, I apologize to anyone who has to watch this video even longer than it needs to be. If you want to, you can click the forward button, try and go forward in 30 second increments to skip all that till we flip over and start cutting the left. Again, it did not go to the cutting wheel, it went straight to the bevel wheel. And then just washing the optical sawdust off at the end. If it doesn't fit this time, I'm just going to go ahead and take it down by hand on the handstone. I'm going to go old school. You computer people know old school. The old form of uh, computer backup was a pencil and piece of paper. I guess the very first computer was dirt in someone's finger or in the sand while they did their computin. Open! I did that with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just have to stare at it for a couple hours and then it'll melt. Okay, drum roll please. Will it fit this time? Tucking in at the outside corner. No, so I'll tell you what, to speed things up, I'm going to flip this over to L. I'm going to put on here that I'm going to take it down another tenth by hand. We're going to do minus 50. Flip that over to L and hit start. Just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as this go around tracing the shape of the left side. And measuring the thickness to know where to place the bevel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take this block off. Pull the sticker away, use my hand approved drying method, throw that in there, add to my sticker collection. Come down here, make sure there's no HIPAA violations anywhere here. Again, Ray-Bans and frames. So what I'm going to do, let me move that over there so it doesn't get dusty. This is essentially a small version of what's in the machine. This is another handstone. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to slowly go around, shaving off a little bit around the edge of the lens. And it's throwing up little white sawdust everywhere. Make sure all the optical sawdust is off. I'm going to see if it fits first time around. Tuck it in at the outside corner. Right, some more optical sawdust. Make sure that's all off. And now it pops in there easily. So I'm going to come down here with start to begin the process of what's known as final inspection. Turn the axis wheel back to 70. The axis for the right eye, put it in. I've wiped off the pupillary distance, but I can put another one in there. Find the center. Put a dot on there before I forget. But I'm reading the power that I'm getting is minus one and a quarter, one going away from zero into the red minus numbers. I'm past one, heading towards two. One tick mark past one. That's because the unit of measurement in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. Starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter. So you're on the fifth rung of a ladder. 
Now, once the image is the correct size, your lens is minify, hence the minus sign. A magnifying lens is a plus number. With your glasses off, everything is much too large, so your lenses will minify the object down to the correct size. Once it's the correct size, you have half a diopter of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. So you have one power here, one curvature on your lens this way at minus one and a quarter. 90 degrees away, you have another half a diopter that is half a diopter steeper than that one. And that's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. Let's read the second power, and we're at minus 175, one tick mark away from two. That's because, remember high school math where you add two like signs together? Well, you probably do, John, since you work in Silicon Valley. The rest of us don't. So let's use today's terms. Somebody borrowed $1.25 from you, then they borrowed another 50 cents. They would owe you $1.75. That's where we're at, 175 in the red. Now, your left eye has one and a half diopters, six steps but only one step of astigmatism correction, so we're going to still end up at 175. Now, this last number, these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number can be anywhere from 0 to 180. That just tells us the fine two knob where to adjust everything. Take that out. Dry everything off. We're going to see if this fits at the minus 50. Look, I've lost your frame. There it is. Uh, yeah, let me darken that your pupillary distance. Hey, come on flashlight. Get in the game. Get in the game. Stop trying to steal the show. So let's see if this fits. I have the side I'm working on closest to me. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corners. Push down. Yep, it snaps in. So we're going to write down minus 0.50, which is half a millimeter. Smaller than originally started out. Sometimes the tracing can stretch the plastic if it's thin, and so that's why I cut a little bit large, but that's why I don't take everything down to the necessary size. Take that block off, pull the sticker away, step back for the three-point shot. Oh, brick! I didn't call glass either. All right, I got the offensive boards, though. So, for those of you who are not sports people, that means I got my rebound and put it in. But you guys got gold to state. You know a little bit about that. You know a little something-something. So I'm going to turn the axis wheel to 109, put it in over that black dot, read the power, and I am getting minus 150, exactly halfway between 1 and 2, which is where you'll find 1.5. Now you have the smallest amount of astigma, astigmatrism. <laughs> I cracked myself up. All right, so again, we're at minus 175. For your quarter step of astigmatism also known as the cylinder now the last couple steps of final inspection is i'm going to measure the pupillary distance 35 plus 34 is around 100 or 69 whatever comes first optical center height of 21 so just like the crosshairs of a scope i measure vertically and horizontally the horizontal measurement is 69 i'm going to turn the card around place the pd stick against my thumb and then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 69 millimeters. That is cut perfectly. Now, the, the vertical height of 21, not to the bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the plastic. Because again, the lens goes halfway into the plastic. We're getting 21 millimeters. That is cut perfectly. 21 millimeters. Man, the kit is good. Now, the last part of final inspection is to clean your lenses and get it in standard alignment. But as I clean your lenses, I like to mention that everyone, that when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Now, when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and press down on the counter, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. For those of you keeping score at home, I am wearing the Christian eyewear, model number Philippians 413 in black and silver. You can get the same frame with gold crosses or with silver crosses. Again, I designed this. This is my brand until I come up with my own smart glasses. This is the one I'll be using. But you can see more of this if you go to ChristianEyewear.com or 
look up uh, Christian eyewear in my videos. I'm going to flip this over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. Then neither temple is askew like that. Check the tension on each hinge, that looks good. I just noticed those dots there, and I wonder underneath there, that's the screw that holds it all together. So, but I send out a selfie request in every package. I would love to have your selfie for the website. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only on your frame and lenses, although I'm going to have to modify that with this, but on the cleaning cloth, you'll get, and actually you get a Zeiss cleaning cloth too, that I need to get out. There's your Zeiss one, with instructions on how to care for those two cloths and for your case, so it too will last you for years. Normally, actually disregard all the cleaning instructions you'll receive. Just use the cloth. Everyone who has one of these glasses has the instructions. It comes with its own cleaning cloth in here. There it is. It says cleaning cloth. So use only this. Study up on your guide because you do have some very sophisticated electronics. You don't want to be dunking this in water. I'm sure it is, you know, fairly waterproof if you're in the rain. But again, ask Alexa how waterproof is are the Amazon Echo glasses and go with their answer not mine they're a lot smarter than me at least i want them to think that so that is that do me a favor if you haven't already subscribe to my youtube channel click the bell icon so you can get notified of future frame and lens combinations as they become available you can follow me on facebook and instagram as free prescription lenses on twitter as free rx lenses if you have any questions you can go to the contact me page of the website or if you just like to type, you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below. I can do, being an independent optician, I can offer you lenses from Zeiss, Essilor, Shamir, whichever ones you want. I can do any power single vision lens. I can do the line stop bifocal. I can do the invisible bifocal with or without transitions and anti-glare. I can do the transitions extra active. I can do the extra active with the flash mirror so that... When you go outside, they can turn silver, gold, green, blue, or red. Now, when you look out, you'll see a very dark gray lens. When people look at you, they'll see a mirror finish on the lens. Or I can do these as devoted sunglasses, where you have one of these mirror finishes on the glasses. I can do any of the anti-glare coatings. I can do nothing at all, but something tells me as sophisticated as the people are who's going to have these glasses, you're going to at least at minimally want an anti-glare coating um, to help reduce glare from when you're in front of the computer screen because I'm sure there's some high-tech people out there Again, this is the DuraVision Chrome which sells for the anti-glare which adds $69.99 now it's three features in one it reduces glare when driving at night But particularly driving at night in the rain but from street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights and such Plus there's the cosmetic effect when someone's looking at you. They're not looking at their reflection in your glasses or if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see your phone in the lens. So again, it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto the lens. So because of the time and the expense, Zeiss puts the hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. But John, in Menlo Park, California, heart of Silicon Valley, this is freeprescriptionlenses.com here in Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, the Silicon Valley of the East. Thank you so much for the purchase of your prescription lenses for your Amazon Echo frames. And now hopefully everyone else has gotten a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.